Hi everyone, I'm Steven and today I'm using cardboard to make the dark hold from the MCU. Let's jump right into it. This project is in four parts. The first part is to make the front cover of the book because that's what the dark hold is, just a big old book. I'm going to craft the dark hold around a cereal box with one of the sides cut off, but cereal boxes are a little bit too flimsy, so I traced the side of it onto corrugated cardboard and cut three corrugated cardboard pieces out, two for the front and then one for the back, but I'm going to save the one for the back in the last step of this project. The cover of the dark hold has a recessed panel, so I needed to cut the center out of the first corrugated cardboard piece. I measured two centimeters in from each side, four centimeters in from the bottom, and 2.5 centimeters in from the top. I connected all the lines, and if you do this, it's going to be a little bit thicker on the top than the sides, but the thickest part is going to be on the bottom because that's where you measured in 4 centimeters. Once everything's cut out, it looks like a picture frame, and then it was time to bring over that second piece of corrugated cardboard and trace the first piece onto it. I then measured 1.1 centimeter in from this line from the sides, top, and bottom, and cut it out. This gave me a picture frame with a slightly smaller opening, but when these two pieces are stacked together, it looks like it's just a recessed portion, and that just means that it's a sunken in portion. So yeah, I glued them together, let it dry, and then to fill this big gaping hole in the center, I took a piece of cereal box cardboard and glued that onto the back of this thick picture frame looking thing. I just trimmed down that cereal box and glued it on with regular white glue. If you make this dark hold, following this tutorial, you can totally just use hot glue. I'm actually just running low on hot glue, so I used white glue for the cover. But yeah, once that was dry, or dry enough, I grabbed a small piece of corrugated cardboard to add on some details that stick out on the cover. I doubled up two small rectangles hot and hot glued them to the top of the top corners. And then I did the same for the bottom corners, except that this time they were pointy little pieces instead of those thin rectangles. And this just helps the cover look more like the actual prop in the movies and the TV show versus uh, just a flat piece of rectangle. Once the hot glue cooled, I took the white glue back out and I spread it all over the cover and then covered that glue with paper towels. I was really careful to give it a very flat layer of paper towels to avoid any unnecessary bunching or wrinkles with the paper towel. It kind of looks like a mess, but once it's all painted, you're going to see that this texture is going to look really nice and it's just going to leave this fine, bumpy, metal-y looking texture that's pretty cool. Because it has a lot of glue on it right now, that takes a while to dry, so I had to wait but once it was all dry, I started doodling on the front recessed section in order to figure out where exactly I wanted the design pieces to go. Once I was pleased with the layout, I used a lid from a jar from my cabinet in order to trace a circle onto some cereal box cardboard. I used some scissors to then cut it out and then cut on the inside of it so it would be a thin piece that kind of just looks like a ring and I trimmed that center piece down and then cut out another ring. So that is two rings that I glued into the center of the cover right on that recessed section. While that glue dried, I started working on the wild looking sunburst pieces that come out of the circles and go off to the right side of the book. These were just long thin triangles that I cut out of cereal box cardboard and hot glued um, onto the cover of the dark hold. I made sure that these pieces bent along with the steps of the cover. This just means that I didn't just glue them flat, I made them bend with the recess panels as it kind of um, stepped up. I hope that makes sense. As for the ends, I folded them over and cut the extra hanging bits off added a little bit more hot glue to hold them into place before I moved on to the bottom sunburst. Unlike the sunburst that I just did where I cut off the ends, the ends on the bottom do not get cut off. 
they're going to hang over the bottom of the book. I didn't want them to be flat, so I cut the ends to look roughly rounded and more organic looking and hot glued them all onto the cover. These also were bent along with the steps in the cover and were not just laid on flat. I also used some hot glue to add some squiggles onto the recessed part of the cover in order just to give another layer of texture in addition to the cardboard and the paper towels and then now some squiggles of glue. Okay, so let's go on to the piece of the cover that looks like a key that sits in the center of the dark hold. I first drew the design for the key head um, onto just a scrap piece of cereal box cardboard. But um, when I was doing that, I realized that the thickness of just one sheet of cereal box cardboard is going to be way too flat, doesn't give me the dimension that I wanted, and way too boring. So I decided that a stack of nine sheets would actually give me a thickness that I liked. However, nine sheets is way too thick to cut out, so I needed to do this in stages. So the first stage was just to make three stacks of three sheets. Each stack gave me three layers for the top and then three layers for the bottom. Um, and then once I added all three stacks together, it was nine layers once everything gets cut out and glued together. But yeah, once all the glue completely dried, I took a piece of sandpaper and sanded the edges so it would look round. It does not take long, even though it probably seems like it does. Even with a busted thumb, it only took me a few minutes to round off each of them. Then I just hot glued them onto the recessed part of the cover. When they were glued down, I covered the center and a strip of cereal box cardboard before adding in a bunch of detail pieces. I added a circle here, a stack of squares there, a rectangle with a diamond on it to act as like a fake clasp. Um, yeah, and I just kept adding little bits and pieces here and there until I got a cool looking cover. The final step was just to add a thin line of hot glue all around the inside of the top layer in order to act kind of like a mini raised up border. And you can't really see it now, but you'll see what I mean with this little, um, with this little hot glue line once everything's painted. That's the front cover. So let's move on to part two, making the spine. I measured the width of the side of the cereal box I used in the first step, traced it on a corrugated cardboard, and cut it out. However, I made the top and the bottom jagged so the spine of the dark hold would look banged up. Instead of using paper towels like I did with the front cover, I smeared hot glue around on it until I got a rough texture. But if you're making this DIY dark hold, you can totally use paper towels to get the texture if you wanted. I just did hot glue for the spine and paper towels for the front cover. As for the symbols on the spine, it was difficult to find the clear reference images, so I used the same symbols that another YouTuber used in his video. His video is linked below for reference. But yeah, those symbols were just cut out of cereal box cardboard and glued on. Nothing crazy there, the spine is really quick to do. So let's move on to part 3, the back cover. I took the last of the corrugated cardboard pieces I cut out in part number one and used it as the base of the back cover. I added some corrugated pieces to the top of the rectangle to give it a unique shape and then hot glued big pieces of cereal box cardboard right to the back. I didn't worry about making anything neat or pretty because I figured it's supposed to be an old spell book so it's bound to look a little bit worn and beat up. 
Um, I debated adding texture to the back cover, but decided I liked it a little bit smoother than the rest of the book. However, feel free to add texture using hot glue or paper towels if you decide to make one of these for yourself. After those pieces were glued down, I glued on a circle in the center and then a little upright ring of cardboard in the center of that. Um, but I quickly realized that I needed to rip that circle off of the back cover in order to make it a little bit easier for me to wrap it in tape. Because that's what I did. I took thin pieces of masking tape and taped from the center out until I had something 3D that looked like it was wrapped in something. And yeah, I glued that back onto the center of the back cover. As you can see, it's 3D and juts out a little bit from the back cover and gives it kind of like a unique accent piece to something that would otherwise just be a boring old back cover. Anyway, with the back cover completed, the spine completed, and the front cover completed, it was time to assemble the entire cover. So I took the cereal box I used in part one, glued on the spine, glued on the front cover, and then glued on the back cover. I used a lot of glue and made sure it was completely dry before I started painting. And the paint job is really, really easy. Just black craft paint that I made sure to get in every nook and cranny until it was a beautiful black book of magic that no longer looked like cardboard. I really love how the cover turned out. It makes me so happy. But on to the final part, part four, making the pages. For the pages, I'm going to use a lot more cereal box cardboard, and I probably could have used even more than what I did. However, I ran out of cereal boxes, so if you make this, feel free to add in a few extra pages just to make your book look a little thicker. Anyway, when I cut these cereal boxes up, I kept a little bit of the side on each of them, this will just help it bend later on when everything's assembled so it bends like a real page. Anyway, the front and back of all these pieces of cardboard were painted in a mix of black, purple, and white craft paint. I kept it very messy and dirty looking so it would look like sheets of magical metal, or at least that's what I thought in my head when I was painting it. But once the paint dried, I took scissors and cut around all the edges so the pages would look torn and rough and there wasn't really that many straight edges on these old ancient pages. I then picked two of the nicest looking pages and used a pen to trace images of the actual dark hold pages onto them. See the indents? The goal was just to leave an indent on the cardboard pages so I would know where to draw. And that's exactly what I did. I drew the designs with a pen onto the pages. I totally took some liberties and improvised too. Um, in fact, I wish I improvised a little bit less because when I started rubbing on paint with my fingers to make the pages look dirty and burned, um, I got a, it got a little bit too patchy patchy for my liking. But overall, I'm happy with how it turned out especially since I mainly made the book for the cool looking cover. And to attach the pages to that cool looking cover, I hot glued on very thin strips of corrugated cardboard between all the pages making sure to keep the little bendy part exposed so the pages could still be bent. Um, I hope that makes sense. But the reason that I added in this corrugated cardboard was just to keep, to separate the pages a little bit, but also to bulk it out. So um, it's a little bit heftier than just something that's just a flat stack of uh, cereal box cardboard. But yeah, I glued those strips in between the pages one at a time and let the glue dry. Once it was dry, I put a lot of hot glue onto the, the spine of the pages and glued it right onto the spine of the cover. Easy peasy. Once all that was done, the last thing that I did 
was I took some silver craft paint and did a very, very light dry brush on the entire cover to make the details pop. And they really do pop in person. But you're gonna see all that in a second with the reveal. So there you have it, the Darkhold from the MCU made entirely from cardboard. I absolutely love how it turned out, it makes me feel like I could put a spell onto someone, and the only thing that I'd change would be to go a little easier on the weathering of the pages in the Darkhold. They look a little bit messy, but overall I'm fine with that mess, and I'm happy with my new spellbook, and hope you guys are too. Anyway, as always, the template and written directions are linked below in case you want to make one for yourself. Please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this one. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye bye!